Hi guys and welcome to this new fun video. I had some footage of me drawing so I wanted to make a video about it and just pop up pop on a voiceover. I am happy and I mainly do illustration, crochet and do-it-yourself art kind of content. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe. First I wanted to show you one of the drawings I did, but I didn't record the process so I just wanted to show it because it's one of my new favorite illustrations. And then I'm going to start drawing a uh, draw this in your style and I have some clips of it. But in this video I want to talk about executive dysfunction. Is that how you pronounce it? Okay, so my English is very bad, but it's basically something that happens a lot in people with ADHD or even people without ADHD. Anyone can have it, I think. Um, and I want to share a bit of my experience and tips. I want to put out a very big disclaimer that I'm obviously not a doctor or a professional. And I have had a time in which these tips wouldn't be helpful at all when I was extremely burnt out and just having a very bad time. So I would really recommend if you are also having a very, very bad time to just seek out a professional or a doctor to help you and give you customized support. But maybe if you're interested, my tips can help a little bit. Um, on a daily basis because these steps I've kind of learned also through social media and while being a person with ADHD so I just want to share my experience a little bit I, I haven't even explained what executive or executive dysfunction actually is I'm always very chaotic in my videos, so it's basically like when you really, really want to do something, it can even be something that you really like to do, like a hobby or for example, but you don't have the motivation to do it. And oftentimes that's related to a lack of dopamine. At least that's how I think of it. Like, I think that's the case. So one thing that really helps for me is if you have a really big task that you, you don't want to do, for example, doing housekeeping stuff. I often do my housekeeping in one day, but it is very overwhelming most of the time. So how I try to trick my brain is to start with a really small task out of all the other tasks. And oftentimes when I start with a small task, I will think like, yeah, I'll only do that task and then I can stop. But oftentimes I'll just keep going after that because I already started. So why shouldn't I keep going? <laughs> That's one of the tricks that really helps for me. Trying to trick my brain a little bit with, oh, I'll, I'll only do this really small task. But most of the time I'll just end up doing the other tasks as well that way. I have a lot of problems with procrastinating, but also something that really helps for me is creating some form of routine so that you really get used to habits. Another thing that really helps if I don't have any motivation to do a task is I'll split up the task into really, really, really small parts and write them down. Because oftentimes I want to procrastinate because the task seems too big and too overwhelming. So it often helps to make it seem a bit less overwhelming and splitting it up into really, really smart, small parts and also writing everything down. I use my calendar for like really, really small details just so that I don't forget them. Another tip is to combine hard to do tasks with fun things. For example, something I do, I'm going to give you a personal example. I really don't like going to the grocery store. That's one thing I'd, I'd often procrastinate. So what I do then is I'll go to the city first and like watch some stores. <laughs> And then I'll go to the supermarket because then I'm tricking my brain into do, to doing something fun, but then also doing what's necessary. 
Another example is looking at a video while you're, you're folding laundry. I think that's a very common one. So the next tip I can give you is to ask for help. For example, I ask my mom a lot to come help me clean the house. Uh, for me, it really helps to mirror to someone else. So for example, when someone else is working or doing a task, it's easier for me to also work or do a task because yeah, I don't know, it's just easy to mirror someone else. And I think that's also kind of an ADHD thing. It's always easier to do something when someone else is already doing it or helping you a bit. Um, of course, if you don't know anyone who can help you, this can be kind of a hard one. But I'm just very lucky to have, for example, my mom. She has time to come and help me. So that's very, very handy. And it also avoids that my house will get like really, really messy because she tries to also keep up with me and I try to do so as well. Yeah, I think the main thing for when it comes to housekeeping tasks, I don't I know that this video isn't based on housekeeping tasks, but for me it's very important to not let it get out of hand so that the tasks that I have to do are still very manageable and kind of easy to do and not too overwhelming. But I think that can also be applied to other tasks that you have to do or maybe on your job. Try to keep up with everything so that it doesn't get out of hand. So the next tip I can give you is to set really easy to handle routines and habits. It's really like it often happens that people set very high goals for themselves, but my advice would be to set a very easy to handle routines and habits just to start with because it can be kind of hard to follow routines that are like a lot more different than what you're used to before. I would really suggest to go take to take very small steps because that will be the easiest to manage and you'll be less likely to procrastinate it, I think. And then the last tip I have for you, I don't know if this will be applied to anyone, but I've done this in the past for a while and it was actually very helpful. It is to set up a reward system for when you're achieving enough tasks. So I'm going to give a personal example again. I wanted to buy a camera, the camera I'm actually filming with, but I was having a very bad um, sleeping cycle and stuff like that. So I've set up uh, kind of like an excel sheet of <laughs> like each day and then the timing I had to go to bed and the timing I had to get up and some more stuff that I've put into the excel sheet and like each day when I've done the the tasks that I had to do I could give myself some points and eventually after like a week or a month if I had enough points I was allowed to buy the camera. Now the reward system doesn't have to be so literal. And also you should allow yourself like basic rewards in your life without having expectations for them. But I just thought this was a nice opportunity because the camera wasn't super necessary for my life, but I still wanted it. So I kind of used that as a trick to get to bed early and, and get up at a decent time. Um, there are other ways to apply a reward system. I think you can do this in many other ways, but that was just how I did it. You can also have like an accountability partner. So for example, you tell them you're going to do something like your task for example and they have to keep up with you and like ask if you if you've done that task so i think an accountability partner can be very helpful as well because then you're not the only one that has to check up on yourself and you know we always want to do better for other people compared to ourselves if you know what i mean 
It's something I also realize now that I'm doing an internship when I choose everything for my day I don't even get up before 11 a.m. But now that I go to my internship, I have to get up at 8 a.m. And that's just super helpful because I know for myself, I'm just a very lazy, lazy person and I don't care that much if I sleep in long. But I know with planning my internship earlier that that is just very helpful for my routine. Um, so I'm kind of relying on my internship <laughs> to get me out of bed, if you know what I mean. So that were all the tips that I have. Again, it could be the case that these tips are nothing for you. Please seek out professional help if you need it, um, because I really understand how hard it can be. I'm just saying these tips because they help me now, but now I'm in a fairly good mental state. I really hope you enjoyed my tips and also the video with the drawings and stuff like that. If you did, like and comment. Comment how you handle procrastination and executive dysfunction. And I'll see you in next week's video. Bye bye! Have a good day or night!